Why isn't it in the fucking game without a free order? You blind? Dude, fucking fanboyism. Microtransactions and DRM. Downloadable content. What's up, gamers? Welcome to Gamer Rant. So if you've been living under a rock, um, there's some controversy going around with Call of Duty, the latest Call of Duty that's going to be coming out. Um, so, apparently there's a screenshot, uh, might be a glitch or an error that took place, bug, what have you, whatever the case may be, um, but the person took a screenshot and they noticed the word loot box had appeared on their screen, um, assuming doing some kind of reward si system that glitched out. Um, and then of course there is a mode that has been locked for an entire year and is timed exclusive on the PlayStation 4. Real quickly, let's just talk about exclusive and timed exclusive in relation to how people are quite fucking stupid when they talk about it. So, a good example is ironically this. I've seen everybody from like Yong Yang to uh, Angry Joe co continuously refer to it as an exclusive. But it's not an exclusive. It's a timed exclusive. Um, this is the biggest problem that I see when it comes to uh, the Epic Game Store. Everyone constantly refers, every time there's a game that is timed exclusive, oh, Epic Game Store has an exclusive game. No, they don't. No, they do not. By definition of what an exclusive game is within the realm of video games, it is not exclusive to that launcher. Because that's really what it is. It's not even really a, a store. This is a launcher that allows you to buy games. It's timed exclusive. And it really irritates the shit out of me to see people that don't call it for what it actually is. Because if you call it what it is, it's what it is. When you sit there and you continuously call it what it's not, number one, you're making it not sound as negative as it actually is. Um, now, apparently, one of the uh, developers for Infinity Ward uh, apparently took to Reddit, ladies and gentlemen. Take a second and think about who on the production side comes to this sub and reads through the comments. Well, that's ultimately irrelevant. Now, honestly, that is irrelevant. It's irrelevant that you or any other developer from any developing team may come to the, the company's Twitter or Reddit and read posts from uh, gamers. And I mean, uh, the fact that you would uh, basically play the victim card here, because that, that, that's what the, the, the intention that I get from this is. Um, uh, Yong Yang, actually, he like liked the post, but also disagreed with certain parts of it. I disagree with it completely. Because at the end of the day, he's just playing the victim card. I mean, the reality of it is, if, if, if this individual can't separate uh, criticism as a whole and somehow see it as just about him or individual developers of said game, there's honestly something wrong uh, with him. And that assumption and that victim uh, playing is all on him and not the people that are voicing their thoughts and concerns regardless of how they are doing it because anyone who is professional enough will take the good with the bad as with a grain of salt. Because even the most uh, vile of posts, and when I say vile, I'm not referring to like death threats or threatening your, to kill your family and stuff like that. That's uncalled for in every aspect. And the reality, most of those are just 99% trolls. Uh, they expect to get a rise from you. They expect you to respond to them. That way they feel some kind of happy goody footy about themselves. But when I say vile, I, may, I mean posts that may contain some profanity where they may clearly see as they're shouting. All right. And honestly, you, you take the good with the bad. And you take the bad just as you take the good. Uh, because no matter how someone's thoughts or concerns are related, uh, be it in a video or be it in a post, it still has relevance. It still has a lesson to be learned. And if you as a developer want to sit here and play this victim card, I mean, that's solely on you. But at the end of the day, I don't really care about you. There, there is nothing that is specific to this game that is directly affecting you. What this game is affecting is your fans. 
And you as a developer should not be playing this victim card of, oh, hey, see it through my eyes. When the reality of it is, is we don't have to see it through your eyes. You should be seeing it through the gamer's eyes. Uh, Infinity Ward is basically owned by Activision. So you're well aware with their reputation. No different than you'd be well aware of Electronic Arts' reputation. Uh, both of these companies treat the very people that made their company what it is today, and that's the fans, like nothing more than a credit card. And when you continuously get these big businesses, uh, game developers and publishers, that constantly ignore the criticism, constantly repeat the same mistakes that they apologize for the last year and the year before, it becomes quite redundant. So, you know, at its core, all I see is an individual playing the victim card. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's not even my opinion, that's a fact. Because if he truly cared about the fans or the art he was creating, he would understand and side with them. Granted, there are things that, yes, we understand he won't be able to say because, well, publisher will put his ass in a corner, either literally or metaphorically, by permanently leaving the building. Which, ironically, you know, I, you know, I always find it funny that developers are relatively scared to speak what they what, what I would say they honestly know all right is bullshit but they're too scared because they're too scared to lose their job and yet they they fail to see that if a developer spoke out like for example uh, this like we had a post where the user agreed with the criticism regardless of how it was delivered he uh, and maybe even he or she themselves leaked whether or not loot boxes would be in it. And then, you know, the publisher was like, oh, well, you're fired. Yeah, good job on that one, Activision. Now, there's some more negative press for you. And, you know, that's the one thing that kind of, it doesn't really surprise me. Um, because at the end of the day, most people are worried about their job. It's easy for someone not in an industry to be like, well, this is what I would do. But the truth of the matter is, is would you? I would like to think that I would have more self-integrity for the art and the fans than having some kind of integrity for the company that really just looks at its art as a product rather than an art form and looks at its fans as nothing more than a credit card. That very mistreatment is why we have all of this controversy surrounding just about any controversy within the realm of video games. And for a developer to sit there and be like, well, see it from my point of view. We don't have to see it from your point of view. We don't develop the games. And, and if you're so soft that you can't take criticism that isn't even directed at you, then I think the only person that really needs to do a self-reflection is you. You know, we, we uh, often fail to realize that at the end of the day, customers are people and employees are people. There's, there's no denying that. But for another person to sit here and be like, well, see it from my point of view. Why don't you be an adult and learn how to take criticism? Ironically, criticism that more than likely, I guarantee, is not directly directed at you, the individual developer, the graphic artist, the writer. Because if we want to get down to the nitty gritty, I could make it about you. I mean, where's your heart and soul and passion for creating art? Because I don't know if you figured this out, Mr. Developer. You don't create art. You create a product. Now, yes, by definition and by, you know, both metaphoric and uh, literal senses, art is a product, regardless of what art we're talking about. It can be a product. But what we're talking about here is the treatment of that art form. And Infinity Ward, along with its publisher, basically treat Call of Duty like nothing more than a product. They don't treat it like an art form. Number one, you're pumping out these games every year, so there's a cash grab right there. That, that is the, the hard factual truth that the publisher, more than likely it's the publisher, but there's someone at the developing company, it's not the developers, 
It's the higher ups at the developing company that's more worried about the art form, that's more worried about the product side of the art form than the art form itself. Now, see, that there is criticism uh, to you as the individual and ironically anyone on the developing team and even ironically specific statements that I literally specified were for the higher up CEO of Infinity Ward. But at the end of the day, that's just criticism. I mean, you take it with a grain of salt. I mean, honestly, it's criticism. There's really nothing you can do about it except maybe go and try and find a developing company that allows you to create art and not just pump out a product every fucking year. But at the end of the day, as we all know from the gamer's perspective, you need a job. So regardless of what I personally feel about modern day developers and their association to these big companies that continuously look at their fan base as nothing but a credit card, the criticism is always toward the higher ups. Unless, of course, the developer themselves, somebody on the team comes out and says something stupid. Then, yeah, it becomes a direct uh, criticism and reflection of you yourself. And, you know, you, you have to, you want to sit here and talk about, we need to see it from your side. You need to look at it from their side, the gamer side. The fan side, to which my opinion would be why people are still fucking fans of Call of Duty is fucking beyond me. It's literally like the sports genre, the same fucking game every year. With just a few glorified updates and maybe some slightly prettier graphics and, you know, different implementations to loot boxes and microtransactions and micro DLC. Nothing really new or innovative, but ultimately that's my personal opinion. Though I would dare say that it's also within the realm of factuality. You need to take a second and see it from the perspective of your fan. The, the, yeah, I'm sure you're well aware of all the controversy surrounding just about every big developer out there. A big publisher. Whether we're talking Bethesda, whether we're talking uh, Electronic Arts, you're aware of the controversies. You're aware of how a lot of gamers don't really care for such things as DRM or um, always online. Day one updates. Yeah, there's something right there. I mean, not a lot of people complain about it in this modern generation. They sure did when it first rolled out. And like I've ultimately stated, day one updates is just a sign of lazy developers. And with that being said, yes, I understand that it is the publisher forcing you to do it, but when you willfully go along with it, then you are just as to blame as they are. Because you're more worried at the end of the day about pumping out a product than pumping out an art form that is supposed to be entertaining. And to sit here and to basically lock a mode of that game and make it timed exclusive is bullshit. And we're not going to feel sorry for you, for the developer, because you're trying to make this about yourself. When the bigger picture here is something that people will be paying for. They don't get access to until later. That is bullshit. That is fucked up. And that's why I would inherently say that, you know, you know, I remember that there was another first person shooter somewhere back in I think a little bit before 2012. There was some controversy surrounding another shooting game. And there was this big thing that people were going to boycott the game. Ironically, when the game came out, push came to shove, all the gamers failed at boycotting that game. So now I'm going to speak to you, the gamer. Now, you know, I, I think Call of Duty is a ridiculous, stupid fucking game. But then again, there's probably other genres and games that I play that you yourself, the enjoyer of Call of Duty, would find stupid and ridiculous. But if you really honestly care about this game, its future, which to me... My personal opinion, there's not much future there, but, you know, semantics, technicalities. Maybe you shouldn't buy it. Not on any platform. You want to send a message, because this is a message that needs to be sent, not just to the developers and the publishers, but to PlayStation. I mean, that's the, the, uh, uh, the biggest aspect of it, is the message needs to be sent to all three of these companies. That timed exclusive content is not acceptable, especially when you are paying for that content, but you won't get access... And you know what? A lot of I've seen some people talk about how, you know, they could understand two months. No, it should not be tolerated at any length. Games are meant to be enjoyed from beginning to end in all of their completeness. And if the developers and the publishers and the console manufacturer, specifically PlayStation, 
is not willing to give that enjoyment to gamers, then they don't deserve the money from the game. But ultimately, that decision is up to you, the Call of Duty player. This will either be a time that you actually take a stand, or you do what every gamer does with every controversy. You buckle, and you buy it anyway. Ultimately, the only thing you will do is basically teach Activision, PlayStation, basically Xbox and PC, because when you allow it from one, they all decide to do it. It's a domino effect. So you'll either stand your ground and not purchase it, cancel your pre-orders, regardless if it's a collector's edition. But as we all know, there was once a boycott, and that never happened. So where's your integrity rely? Do you honestly just need to play the next Call of Duty game? Or maybe you should try sending a message to all three of the companies, or just all companies in general, that timed exclusive content is not acceptable in any length, and it will not be purchased. I don't play Call of Duty, so I'm not gonna. Per I, I wouldn't purchase it anyway. The decision is up to you, the ones who play it.